Good morning, dear friends. Today is November the 3rd of 2016. Uh, I, I am sorry about this glare uh, behind me. Hopefully I will be on a different stretch of road that the sun uh, won't be glaring so bad. Um, anyway, I'm just headed over to uh, my daughter's house to help her out, um, put up some mini blinds in a new little place that me and Jennifer's trying to help her get back on her feet. So I'm gonna go over there and put up some mini blinds for her, and then take her and the kids. I think they wanna go to Dairy Queen, so I'm off today. So I'm gonna have a fun day Papa Asa gonna get to see the grandbabies and I sure am looking forward to that. Uh, the reason why I decided to make a video, I'm headed to Moultrie, Georgia, and this is a big farming community. And I just passed fields of cotton <laughs> on the left and on the right and I mean, they were, I tell you, the Lord God Almighty has truly blessed those cotton fields because it, all you could see was just white. And they had trucks out there and harvesters and they was just getting that cotton. And that reminded me of a couple of things. It reminded me, first of all, of what the Lord said that the fields are truly white unto harvest and pray that the Lord sends people, send laborers out into the harvest. Of course, that's what we're to do. We're to go out and be laborers in the harvest to reap souls into the kingdom of the Most High God. Now friend, it also reminded me, and I shared this way back, about a dream that my sister-in-law had about a year or so ago. And she I believe it was a cotton field too that she, she saw. But anyway, she was standing at the edge of a field. And she said, as far as you could see, the field needed to be harvested. And there was a man standing beside her. And she said to this gentleman, sir, where are all the machines? This field needs to be harvested. Where are they at? You need to get the, the machines in here. And she said that, she told me that, Asa, that man says, no ma'am, that it's too late for the machines. If I brought the machines in here, it would tear up the field. We now have waited so late that we have to go out and harvest one at a time. We have to go out and pick it one at a time. Now friend, that is a profound truth and it is truly a message that God Almighty gave my sister-in-law, Linda. Now friend, it is truly late in the harvest. And if you compare the combines, the harvesting machines with, the, with a church, 
I ain't talking about the church, but I'm talking about a church, a group of believers to where the church opens their doors and people come in that need Jesus. Friend, that used to happen. Friend, you used to could put up a tent revival or tent and have revival and people would come to listen to the music and get saved. But friend, we open the doors now. I promise you, take a poll. Go into churches or, or, or ask pastors if they'll be honest, which they better be, they're, they're, they're ministers of the gospel, ask them how many souls are being saved per month? How many new people are coming to their church and are getting born again? Now, friend, I'm going to tell you this. A church that I used to attend years back, the Lord opened my eyes one Sunday morning, and I saw it in a way I had never had. I liked and loved the pastor. He gave great messages. The music was great. The people were wonderful. And I'm not I, I'm not exaggerating. I really loved this church. I loved the people. But one Sunday morning, the Lord gave me a understanding and I was able to see this congregation in a light. And what I saw was this. The pastor is feeding the sheep. And the sheep are fat. It's a great church to go to. The congregation was wonderful. You get a good message of the gospel from God's word. But there was not a how can I say this? There was not a... I, I don't know how to say it. But in other words, there was no, no message and no uh, encouragement or no admonition to bring others into this congregation. In other words, it, it, it was to me... The Lord showed me that it was a congregation that was just going to keep the, the members full of the word and join the music. And that was it. There was no um, teaching to go into the world and proclaim the gospel. There was no teaching to go out and compel others to come into the house of the Lord that they can meet the Lord. There was no outreach to the lost. And when that was shown to me, it made me physically upset stomach-wise. I mean, it just, it just, it just made me, it just made me feel like, you know what? This isn't what we're supposed to be doing. Yes, come together. Come together. Worship the Lord. But bring others in so that they can find Jesus Christ. You know, every empty seat Every empty seat in your congregation is a missing soul that could and should be sitting there. 
If you have a church building and it can hold 200 people comfortably, I'm saying, because you'll never pack it out because people don't want to be uncomfortable. But if you have a church building that can hold 200 people comfortably and there's only a hundred people coming church uh, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday my friend there should be another 50 to 70 people coming and being invited to that church building by the hundred members if you have got a little church that can hold a hundred and you only got 50 there's 20 to 30 more people that needs to be invited even if you have to invite them 50 times maybe on that 50th time instead of saying no they'll say okay I'll finally come so you will quit aggravating me and then they'll come and God will touch them you know Jesus gave the example that if the neighbor comes and knocks on your door he won't get out of the bed to answer the door because you're his friend and neighbor he's gonna get out of the bed so you will stop knocking on the door <laughs> I mean you know just so you will leave me alone what do you want I need some uh, a cup of sugar take the sugar and go on I'm, I'm trying to go to bed here it's the same way. We cannot accept no the first time. And it don't hurt to politely ask the same person more than once to come to church, to maybe meet you somewhere for a cup of coffee and a Bible study. That don't hurt. I'm telling you, we must be about the Father's business. You know, when Mary went looking for Jesus, praise God, I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this old car right now, I'm telling you, because I know I'm touching on something that touches God's heart, salvation of a lost soul. When Mary went looking for Jesus, and she found him. He said, I'm in my father's house. I'm doing, I'm about my father's business. And that's what, you know, one of the last things Jesus said. That we are to go into the world, proclaim the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are to go into Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of this earth. Friend, you and I live in the uttermost parts of the earth. You and I are to go into the highways, the byways, and neighborhoods, and we are to invite others to come to the light, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is what we are to do. I'm telling you. There is so many people that will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I told her a, a young man the other day, he was, uh, I think he was 23 years old. His name, I believe, was William. I tell you, he was a fireball. <laughs> and uh, I told him, I said, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, make sure you know him, brother. He said, oh, yes, sir, I do, I do. <laughs> I said, okay. Well, you know, uh, that, that was good to know. But, um, you know, there is people 
that right now in this hurting world, in this hurting world, need God. And friend, let me tell you, the Spirit of God is moving mightily right now. I'll tell you, the Spirit of God is moving mightily. Lord, I feel God's presence. The river of the Holy Spirit is moving mightily. And I'm telling you, if you will jump in to that river of the Holy Spirit, my friend, the Holy Spirit will fill your temple, will fill you up with His presence, and will give you boldness to speak in His name, the name of Jesus, you will find boldness to bring others and to invite others into the kingdom of God. And friend, the same way that the, the example that the Lord gave about the talents, don't go hide your talent. You go take your talent and you go make it return to the Lord bountifully. You are a born again child of God. You are a good tree bearing good fruit. You should and I should go out and bring other trees into the kingdom. We are to produce other born-again children of God for our God. We must bring others the gospel. Because, friend, they're not going to come to the church doors. They're not going to come to the church doors like they used to. We're going to have to get out one by one. You know, I know the song that goes one, at, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Well, just take that word day out of it. One at a time, sweet Jesus. One at a time, sweet Jesus. We're going to share the gospel, share your word, share your love, and pray that you, through the Holy Spirit, will convict them of rejecting Jesus Christ, and they will turn from their wicked ways and accept you Lord Jesus Christ friend we have got so much to do with this time that we've got left I'm telling you I'm telling you I'm telling you I'm telling you this is what God's will for us to do I'm telling you God's will his perfect will for you and I is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not to go out and build a bigger house, build bigger barns, to make a bigger pool. Our will should be in line with God's will that His will, which is done in heaven, will be done on the earth. My friend, I'm telling you, Read God's Word. Jesus trained those 12 disciples to be soul winners, to be fishermen of men. And you and I should follow in the footsteps of those disciples, those 11. Don't fall in the footsteps of number, number that 12th one that, that uh, rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and, and uh, you know, this had him put to death all because of monetary gain we are to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and do the works that he has set forth in front of us to do my dear friend well friend let me end this video right now so I can uh maneuver through this little bit of traffic that we got right now and as always I say God bless you and I pray Father God 
Father God, fill your people with your power, your presence, and the Holy Spirit. Fill them with your love, your joy, and your peace. God bless you, dear friend. You have a blessed and wonderful day.